Welcome to our channel. Hi there, my name is Zanjan. I am a full stack DevOps engineer with 11.5 years of experience working in IT. I am also a 4.5 star rated Udemy instructor teaching more than 72,000 students worldwide. On this channel, my goal is to make you learn and grow by sharing my experience. So if you like my work, then do like this video, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe this channel for more such awesome videos in future. So let's get started. Thank you. So let's talk about streams in Java 8. So let me put this streams. And this is for java.util.stream. Because we also know that streams also exist for java.io stream where we were doing operation on file related things or file system related operations. We were doing with the help of that stream. But this stream helps us helps to operate on collection, collection object that we know the collection framework. If you want to operate on that, we have to use this stream, which is in java.util.stream. So let's look at by examples how basically we can use stream on the collection objects to do some logic or operate and achieve some functionality. So let's create a package stream and let me first create, let's do a first one example with stream uh, let's say one. Let's uh, put it this way. Okay. And then I would just go ahead and create public static void main string array. And let's go ahead and create an array list of integers. So array list of integers, I would say numbers equal to new array list. So let's create a, a, a numbers array and then let's try to add some items to it. Add, I would say one, then I will just copy it. Let's add a few more. So I'll say two, three, four, five, six. Similarly, there can be more, let's say seven. So you can keep on adding more items to it. And if we had to print it, we would just say uh, system dot out dot print align. And I would say, I would just print the array list. And if I would run this, let's see what will be the output. So it's going to basically just print the numbers. So this is our, this is our output. Okay, let's copy that. So this is our output. Now, if I want to only have the odd numbers from this list, then how we used to do it in Java 7. So and till Java 7 odd numbers. Let's say we want only odd numbers. So we would basically go for for each for each loop. And in the for each loop, we will just say like this. Uh, yeah, here we will say numbers. And on this side, we will add the 
data type integer and let's say num. And now we will check if the num, the number which is coming now at the moment, at the moment modulo two, number modulo two not equal to zero, then this is an odd number. But I now I want to store it. So I have to create another array list. So it's a list of integer odd numbers equal to new array list. And then I will say odd numbers dot add you will keep adding those numbers and once this loop is over i'm going to just print it again so this is our loop and after this i will say odd numbers so now let's run the code and see what is the output See, this is our output. So this is uh, the odd numbers. So odd numbers are this. So this is how we used to do it in Java until Java 7. If you had to do some manipulation or logic, you created temporary list and then store the data in that list. This was about Java 7 until Java 7. So now let's see how we can achieve this using Java 8. So Java 8 streams. Okay. So for that, let's first try to call streams. So on the collection framework, that's what we said. Streams helps to operate on collection objects. Okay, great. Which means this is a collection object numbers. So on this, we can call dot stream function see if i say this so it is going to return a stream of integer okay if we say what is this stream function it is coming from the if you see collection framework collection in inside the collection interface they have added a method a default method called stream which means if it is added in the collection, it is going to be available automatically in all the child uh, classes as well. That's what we saw about default. So if you go here, see stream is a default method. It returns a stream and this is a default method added inside an existing interface, which is collection. So in our collection framework, the top interface is iterable. The collection interface extends that iterable, and all other like array list has set. All these are going to basically extend this one collection. So the stream, the new method which was added, stream, which is a default method, will be automatically available in the child as well. That's what we learned also in the our default method earlier. So if you go here, if we see here about default methods, default methods helps in bringing functionality, bringing backward compatibility, right? And default method is available inside the implementing class automatically there can be more than one default method. So this stream default method was introduced in a collection interface to provide backward compatibility. So now that we know this returns a stream of integer in this case, so we can basically stream of integer. You can say stream of integer. So here we can say stream, and then this will be an import from, let's check, 
java.util.stream package and that's where we have this stream interface which basically has that method so now this returns a stream and of course you can also write in a shortcut manner but this is a stream which has been written so we are calling the stream function on the collection and it is returning as the stream of the data type like here the, the collection was storing integers data type so a stream of integers you received if it was storing string then you would have received stream of string if it was uh, employees you will receive a stream of a stream of employee so it will return the stream on the data type so now if we go back we can either write it this way or we can also keep it simple now let's try to achieve the same functionality so on the collection we call the stream and on the stream we will call a method called filter why do we need this method basically what we want is to filter from this big number collection or list we want to filter only those which are having odd numbers so for that if you remember we did that in the past we used to write predicates see this is a predicate which was filtering i mean which was doing the odd number check so if i take this copy this this predicate which is also a lambda expression and then i go to my filter method and paste this one so then this is exactly so it is just an argument like from the stream one by one we will get the number and each number we are checking if it is surprising it is uh, num modulo to not equal to zero then we say this is our odd number and then we want to collect it we want to collect it as a part of another child list so we'll say collectors dot to list collectors dot to list so what we did in the filter it takes a predicate we pass the predicate predicate is nothing but the condition the filter condition it is all it is also a lambda expression basically so we pass the lambda expression whatever was the result we wanted to collect it to into a list so we did collectors dot to list and now this sub list which is being returned we will store it so let's reuse our previous declared a list to store this one so if we closely have a look now we had this collection then we converted it to stream and then on the stream we applied some filtering for the filtering we used the predicate loud the lambda expression after whatever was the result from the stream we wanted to convert it back to collection so we are collecting back inside the list and that list is being returned here so let's try to now print it print the output so system that out dot print ln and we say odd numbers using java 8 stream so let's print them odd numbers let's run so we will have the same result let's check so see it's exactly the same result as we got using java 7 but then it is much more compact in just one line you are able to achieve it rather here you had to apply three lines so that's advantage of using streams and also lambda expression to um, filter your collections so this is one syntax, but we can also 
comment this and copy this line and do the same thing, exactly same thing using our predicate, what we learned. So if I copy this line from here and then I paste it here and then I would, instead of writing the lambda here itself, here in this filter box, I'll pass the predicate. And now if I run the program, it will result exactly the same output. So you can create your own predicate and then you can pass it. And of course it will work. See, it's we have the same result. All right, now let's look at some more examples of streams. So let's go ahead and let me copy this. I'll paste it and I will say stream map. And let me name this one as stream. Rename this one as stream filter. Okay, now let's go to our this class. All right, so now this is our. I will get rid of all this. So this is my list and it, this is the input. And now what I want is, I want an output like this. Output should be, let me copy this. Everything multiplied with, let's say, Three, so for three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, and then we have twenty one. So if I need something like this, so my number of elements are same. We are not doing any filtering, it is here seven elements. Here also seven elements, just that on each element, there has been some operation done and it looks different. So now we are doing one to one mapping uh, of the elements. So how, I, how we can achieve these kind of functionalities in stream? Okay, so there's, there's something called, in the stream interface itself, there's something called map function. And here, when you do this, here you don't basically do any uh, filtering, rather you do just mapping. So let's say this is our input, which is denoted by let's say A. And now we will do some operation on the input. So I will say A into three. And then we will do a collect. And we will collect it into collection dot collectors dot to list. Let's see what's the problem. Okay, so here it says here we have the variable a already defined. So it says so let me rename this to arts. This one. So now this is our input. Or let me say like this input. And then this is our operation on the input, which is like mapping, which is being done. So first is one. So one comes here, then one into three. This is that the output and that gets stored in the list. Then two, two comes here, two into three, six, and that gets stored here. So total number of elements are exactly same in input and output, just the mapping operation has happened. And once this is done, we will basically, if you want, we can store it in the same list as well, or we can create another one. So we can't store it here. Let's create a new one. So I have a list of integer output. Let me put it this way. And now, if I try to run, I mean, Print the output. Uh, 
output of mapping is output list. Let's print it. Let's see the output. So you see, let it run. So the input was this and output was this. So three, this is one becomes three, two becomes six and seven becomes 21. So here no filtering, but rather mapping. And then you write a lambda function inside this. And then of course, the, that uh, particular functionality can be achieved. So now let's do something which is including both the map and filter. So let's try to do another example. So let's create a class stream map filter will copy the public static void main. And here, let's create a list of string. Let's say fruits is equal to new array list. When we say fruits dot add mango fruits dot add. Apple. Similarly, let's add a few more. A banana, a kiwi, and let's say papaya. and uh, grapes so now what we want is find only those fruits whose length is greater than then let's say five so let's see how we can do that. So let's call our fruits dot stream. Then we can call the map function. On the map, we can say fruit f, then f, we'll say f dot length. And then on this, we will return, we'll write filter and we'll say, We'll have to write filter. Yeah, so now if we do this and then dot collect, so let's say collectors dot to list. So if I directly print this, system dot out dot print again. So what this is going to return is length of all the fruits. So length of all the fruits will be returned. So we see five, five, six, four, six, six. But what if I want to get this? Only fruits whose length is greater than five. So let's copy this and change this little bit. So I will say instead of map, we will say filter. And we'll say filter greater than five. 
So now we will see only fruits whose length are greater than five, which is six, 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 three items. Banana, papaya, and grapes will be returned. So this is great. So we can achieve this kind of constant as well. So now let's say if we want, if we want to get, let's run this one first. So we see banana, papaya, grapes. But what if I want, don't want this, I only want the number of I want the number of characters of this. So I want all the elements whose length is greater than five. And I want to not print the name, but I actually want to print the length. So I will say, stream.filter, then I will say, dot map. And then I will again say, this f dot length. And then it will do the collect to the to list and then to list will be printed out. So if we run this, see, we got the output as this, 666 from this one. Then this one is this one. Then this is this. So this is how you can combine map and filter together. So let's write down some comments here. So this is uh, the below one, what we achieved. And this is basically, we said print length. Every root. And here we said is uh, find root whose length is greater than less than five. Let's say now I want to know. How many uh, fruits exist whose length is greater than five? How many fruits exist that have a length greater than five? Let's uh, try to achieve this one. Okay, so for this, again we do fruits dot stream dot filter. Of course, we have to filter. And then we say f, f dot length greater than five. And now instead of doing a collect, we will do a count. So once we do this, it is going to give us a long, long number of fruits with length greater than five. Like this, so now we can print it. System dot out dot print again. Now let's see the output. So the output should be three, see? Because banana, papaya, grapes have length greater than five, and that's why we get the output as three. So let's uh, use the sorted function. So stream sorted function. So here also we need some data. So let's uh, copy this.
Important. Paste this. And now this is our list. So if I print this, instant dot out dot print then let's say we put here 22, 41, 7, and this is uh, 66, 63. So let's say this is our order. And if we print this one, we'll get the numbers. See? And it maintains the order of insertion. But now if I want this to be in the sorted order, so how can I achieve this? So I will copy this. Normal insertion. Order. Let's, let's say ascending sort. We want it in ascending sort. So we will say numbers dot string dot. You see, there are two methods sorted and sorted, which takes comparator as well. So let's check what is sorted. Then we do sorted. Then we do collect, and in this we'll pass the collectors. Collectors dot start to list. Now, if we see the second one, will be sorted in ascending order. So let's run it. So one, three, five, seven, forty-one, sixty-three. But let's say I want to have it in some custom order, custom way of sorting. And that's where we have that another method for which takes comparable. So I will say custom sorting. So here I will say instead of sorted, See, it takes comparator, two arguments. So it takes, it is a method, which this is the lambda of it. So let's write down the lambda. So like this, like this, and like this. So first is, first element, element one compared to element two. And now, if we do the normal, Sorting order, then I will say element one dot compared to element two. So if we run this by default, if we don't do anything, it will again take the normal order, natural order. So let me get rid of this is not needed the bracket. This bracket is unnecessary. So let's run it. So you, even without custom sorting, nothing will change because we do not write any logic. So it is also doing the exact same sorting. So let's say I want this to be in the descending order. So descending order, then I will make this element two and this one as element one. Then it is going to do the descending sort. Let's see, it was six. 41, 22, and then descending short to custom, descending short using comparator. So we can also, we can write the same thing here. Copy. And if we did not want it to swap this position of elements, we can basically say minus whatever comes as a negative of it. Then also it will be custom sorting only and descending sorting. Let's see. See, last one is because of this one, minus element one. So either you change the elements, swap the elements, or put a minus in between, in front of it. Then it does the descending sort. 
So this is for your custom order, whatever your order you want to short. For, you pass the comparator as a lambda. And this is the normal order, this one. The normal ascending order of the integers. Let's look at another example. So let's do it. So I'll say stream as reference. Or let's say column operator. Let's say column operator. Okay. So now what I want is let's say I have a uh, I will again copy paste some things. Okay, let's copy this with method. Um, and then, okay, or let's do it in a different way so that you learn different ways to create elements. So I have this list and I will say list of strings. And I will say uh, alpha numeric numerics. Okay. And now I will say arrays dot s list. All right. And now I will do, I will enter some elements. Let's say I will say 11, comma, e. 44, comma, small a, 22, comma, small a, 49, comma, capital G, 66. Let's say this is our elements. What I want is, I want all the elements that start with capital A. So, so all the elements that start with capital A. So I will say alphanumeric dot stream. And then what I'm going to say dot filter. And then I will say element, which is E. E dot, let's represent the input with E. E dot start with, starts with, and I will say A. And then I will say, Collect, collectors dot to list. All right, great. So this is going to give me a list of str list. Let's see this. Now let me print this. System dot out dot print again. Paste it, run it. Let's see the output. Where is the output? So we got only A11 and A44, but you see, we did not get A22 and A49, which is not good. We should ideally get them as well. So what went wrong? Because this was small, that's why we did not get it. So let's first map it before filtering we map it map map and then what what do we want to map every element that we are getting let's say i dot if i make it i dot to uppercase and now if i run then i will get this as well because this will be converted to first uppercase and then it will be filtered. Great. Well, the, this exact same thing, this thing, we can also achieve it using method reference. So let's see. So copy, paste. Here, instead of this, the arrow operator, we want to call the string to uppercase function of string class. So we'll say string 
and then colon colon to uppercase. So this will exactly work the same. So this is method referencing. So we are calling to uppercase method of string class. This we have also studied in the past. So let's run it. We'll see the exact same output. Yeah. So let's uh, understand another topic, which is the filter is a lazy operation, lazy operation on string. So let's prove this with example. So let's say we write the same thing. We write our same thing, but in not single line, rather in a multi line. So we do this and then we call the stream and we are doing the chaining and then we call the filter. And then in this filter, we will do multi line. So first is let's say the input and then we do multi line and then I'm trying to print system dot out dot print ln. Let's try, try to print the input. And in the next line, of course, we also have to return from here because you know it, it became multi-line, so you have to return it from here. So I will say input dot starts with capital A. So this is this one that we converted here. And then we have to give semicolon. So now if I run, let me comment this and try to run this. So what will be the output if I run? So it will basically take each of them and print and then it's going to convert it to capital. That is the expected output, but let's see what happens. So we see no output no output. The reason is this statement does not get executed. This filter or the stream and the filter on it is ready, but it is stored in the memory. It will only get executed once you do some action on top of it. Action like collect to collectors.list or action like let's say count so only if you do some action on this, uh, the stream and the filter, only then the code will get executed. That's why filter is a lazy operation on the stream. So let's run it now because we have called count operation on the this filter. So now it will basically execute the code inside it. See, so this is how we can prove that filter operation is a lazy operation on stream. Let's look at the for each method. So let's comment this. And this as well. And what I want is, I will copy these two lines and paste it here. And you know the output, it will print the output as above. But what if I don't want to do this? I don't want to do the collect. So what, what we have been doing here? So on uh, our collection, we are calling stream and then we are chaining it with the map. And then we are again chaining it with the filter. And again, we are chaining the filter with the collect. And then at the end, we are collecting it. Let's say I don't want to do this. So. I, I don't want to collect it into the list and pass return it here and then print it here. Rather, I want it to print here itself. Whatever we are getting out from here, we, I want to print it here itself. So if you want to achieve that kind of functionality, so we can do that with one, one uh, operator called for each. We'll see that. So if you hover on this, this this thing returns a stream. This is returning a stream. This is returning a stream. But we have 
a terminator function called for each and then it this does not return any stream it basically takes an input and then you just print that input so write a lambda function print ln and then you can print this as your normal lambda function now this for each is just going to take element and loop through the whatever is the result of this it is going to loop through them and print it here so we don't need this anymore because it's not going to return anything as this is a terminating terminating option or terminating function so this the chaining from here which starts is going to end by this terminating function which is returning void whatever will be pass here we are passing a lambda just to print it out so if we now run it we'll see the output and it will be exactly the same no difference So we can also print this using the colon or the reference operator. So let me repeat this line. And here also we can say system dot out. We will get rid of this and then we will say system dot out. And then the reference operator, double clown operator, and then we will say print ln. That's it. And this will also give us the same output. Let's run it. See exactly the same output, which is here. So you can use it either way, but remember that this is a void method. It's not going to return anything. So here the operation of this whole chaining ends and we are just simply printing it. If you want to return the output and do something else with it, then don't go for this, rather use collectors.to list and it is going to return you a list which you can use and do further manipulation. Let's start with the stream min and max. How, how can we find min and max on stream? So let me create a class called stream min max and then Let's go ahead and create our main method. So that will be public static void main. Okay. Now let's uh, let me create for this example. How uh, let's create an array of integers or list of integers. So list of integers, and then say a num num list is equal to let's create array dot as list, and then let's create so let's add some numbers for so fifty five, twenty twenty two. One forty eight one zero one seventy seven. So let's say this is our uh, num list number of uh, it's an integer list and it has some values. So now let's see how we can uh, do this. So let's say uh, I will say num list because first we will convert it to stream okay stream dot and then here we will see we have a function called min and this min function takes a comparator so let's try to do that and in the comparator it takes two parameters so we will write it in lambda form and
So first A and B, the comparator takes two uh, arguments and then we say return A dot compare to B. And then whatever is the return output, I want to get it. So just call the get function on top of it. Once we do that, let's see what is the error we are getting. Yeah, in fact, this is only one line of code. So we can also ignore this return and curly braces and this bracket. So it should be gone. But let's say I write it. So now it is going to return me the minimum value from this array. Because this is a comparator, this comparator will evaluate and the minimum value will be returned. So let's store it. Okay, similarly, let's uh, try to do with the max value also. So it's very simple, just copy paste it and change the name to max value. And then here you can say max. So everything remains the same. And now if we try, we try to print it, system.out.println, uh, we will just write it in a, print it in a user-friendly manner. So min value, and then we'll put the value, which is min value, and then we'll say comma, max value, and then we are going to just say plus max value. And now if I run the program, we should get uh, the expected is minimum should be one and the max should be one zero one. Let's see. It's building the code now. So if you see the min value is one and the max value is 101. So we saw how we can get the min and the max value from a list using streams. But if you see, we are repeating this lambda expression. So is there a way that we can basically just reuse the code? Yes, it is quite simple. So let's make a method public static. And then we just say integer. And here we are just going to say, let's say method uh, sorting. Short element. And then from here, it takes two parameters integer, a comma integer, b. And from here, we can say return a dot compared to b. And now we can go ahead and replace the code. So these two lines we can modify and optimize. So I will keep these comments as this, these lines for reference, but I will copy paste them and show you how we can replace this code. Because as we said, the, the double column operator is the replacement of Lambda. So what we will do on this class, we will basically get rid of this Lambda. Same for here. And on this class, we will call the double column sort elements method. And same, I will copy paste here as well. So this is how you optimize your code. If I run now, it will be the same output. Nothing will change. Yeah, you see that. Okay, now assume that I have another list. We'll copy this. 
paste it and I will let, let, let me put it as duplicate number list. And what I will do, I will copy this and duplicate them. Copy, paste. So now I see there are a few numbers duplicate in this list. What I want is, I want a distinct item from it. So for that, let's first short the list. So what I will do, I will say uh, duplicate number list dot string. And then I can say shorter. And we will basically short our elements. So we just say sorted with the default the sequence, it will sort the elements with a num number natural order. And then I want to also collect them as a separate list. So I will say collect and I will say collectors dot to list. And now I will just hold them list of integers. Integers. So this will be duplicate sorted list. So now if I print this duplicate sorted list, system dot outdoor printer. Let's see the output. Now this is the list duplicate sorted list. Let me print them with a message. So if I run it now, let's see what will be the output. So duplicate sorted list. So 11, 22, 48, 48, 55, 77, 77, 101, 101. So now what I want is I don't want this duplicate, uh, this uh, duplicate items in it. I want only the distinct items. So how I can do that? I will just copy paste this. And I will say duplicate, no, I will say distinct now, distinct or unique. So unique sorted list. How can we do that? After this is sorted, I just have to call another function that is dot distinct. And now if I try to run the program, we'll see what will be the output. So you see, it's a distinct sorted list is, it's one, one, two, okay. Somehow it did not work. Let's see uh, what happened. Okay, we have to take this one. You have to take this one. You have to take it sorted. You have to act on this, the sorted one. Oh wait, no, actually not. It is fine, that can be also fine. We have to take this one and print. We are printing a wrong element. That's why we saw the same output. So if I print this one, district sorted list. So let's see what will happen now. So you see now we have the sorted elements, but in uh, or sorted elements and also the unique elements. Earlier we were printing the wrong, we were printing this, that's why we, we were getting the same output, but now you see, this is a duplicate sorted list. So this is the output. And this is our distinct sorted list, which is this is the output. So this is how we can find min max and short uh, and define distinct elements in stream. Let's look at the next uh, functions which is a stream peak and skip function. So let's go ahead and create those. For that, we will copy paste the main methods in text. And I will say list of string. And then I will say, Flat. Let's say we are having a list of flats in an apartment. So flats equal to arrays dot as list, and we'll say uh, b zero one 
b zero nine b zero eight. Let's we'll copy this. I will copy, keep pasting, and I will change the numbers later. Let's say we have this, and in between, let's say this uh, T01, and this is B11, uh, this is B05, and then this is B05 again. And B, let's say T. T seven or T zero seven. So these are the flats that we have. What I now want to do is, I basically want to just filter out only those flats which start with A. So how we can do that? So first I will say flats dot call the stream, and then on the stream you can basically now filter. So we'll say filter, and then we'll apply our Lambda. So it's a flat, and then it's a any flat which starts with, and we give that syntax as a. Also here we are saying b, which flat start with b. And now we also want the result to be the sorted order. So sorted order, and then we want to collect it. So we will say collectors dot to list. Now I will just uh, hold this and let's say flats with B. That's starting with B. And if I print this now, So let's run and see what happens. If we only get flat starting with B uh, and also in the sorted order. Yeah, it is correct. So it says B0, 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 But the problem is now it is not unique. So what I will say, after this sorted, I will set just put distinct. So if I run it again, what will be the output? So we got 1, 5, 8, 11. This is fine. Now let's see if I want to skip B01 and B05, how I can do that. So let's say I want to skip, I want to skip uh, the first two elements in my sorted item. I don't want these two. Then after the distinct, I can say skip and then pass the number of elements I want to skip. So let's say here I want to skip two. Two elements starting from starting. So these two will be skipped now and I will get only these two as output. Let's run and see. You see, if I wanted to skip only one element, then uh, from starting, if I want to skip only one element, if I do this, change this to one and run it, then it will print me rest of the three elements. Yeah. Okay, this was about skip. So let's uh, write it down a little bit of notes. Uh, just think function removes duplicate and returns unique list. Similarly, skip function skips the number of elements from start starting skips the specified number of elements from the starting 
Let's look at another function which is about peak. So for that, let me comment this one. And let's break this one here. So let's say I want to see what is the value here. What is the value of my elements after sorting? It's more like debugging. How can I check that? For that, I will say peak. And in this peak, it will not return anything. But then we can print our elements. So what I will do? As the system dot out dot print ln. I will call I will call the print ln function with the help of double column operator here. And now let's try to print it. So we'll see all the elements just after sorting how they look. So we have applied the peak after sorting. We could have applied the peak after distinct also. So I see after sorting, the, the list looks like this. Similarly, you can apply the peak anywhere you want and you will be able to debug and see the values at that moment. So let's mention that peak function helps in debugging to see what is happening after a particular operation on the stream. So this is how the peak function works. Let's see how we can create streams. I mean, we know that stream works on the collection framework, but the different other ways of creating streams. So let's say stream extras, let's put it that way. And if I go ahead and first go ahead and try to create my main method, uh, well, I will copy it from somewhere. This is what I can copy. And now, so far, what we have been doing is we have been creating some uh, collection as a, a list, and then we were calling stream on top of it. Let's say I have an integer, the primitive type integer array uh, of, let's say, A and then I have uh, two, five, four, six, something like this. Numbers are there. Four, five. But this is just integer. Uh, now, similarly, I can have a float, a primitive, or a long primitive. But now I array, and I want to. Uh, I want to use the. Uh, stream functions like um, map, filter, mean, max, all these things on top of this. I cannot do that. So for that, we have to convert this into stream. So for that, we have got two options. Uh, option one is for primitive, uh, like int float long. We can use something called as arrays dot stream function. And then we can pass this int float long and double. Actually, we can, there is no option for float, it's a double. So we have to, we have this option. So it's int long double. We can pass this and then we will be able to uh, get stream on top of it. So if I say, uh, let's pass this A, then what does it return? This stream basically is going to return us, if I do this, it's going to return us an int stream. Because this is, if you see, because this is taking an integer array of primitive type, so it is returning an int stream. 
if it was taking a long area of primitive type, it was written long stream. And then similarly for double, it was written double stream. So I can go ahead and just say int stream is is equal to this. And then I can do whatever operation I wanted to do on top of it, like filter, find any, find first flat, sorted, whatever I want. So this is one way. So if it was uh, double, then I, it would have written double stream. It was long, then it would have written long stream. The other option, other way, so let me put write it this way. This method only works for, works for primitive int double long this method of converting to stream converting to stream only works for this but what if i want to convert anything to stream so for that we have got another option called stream and then off here I can pass any values, anything I can pass and it will convert me a stream. And then let's say if I pass this array, it is going to get converted into stream and what it will return is again a stream. So stream S1, this is how it works. Similarly, if I had, let's say stream S2 is equal to stream dot of, and then I can say uh, two, four, two, one, five, something like this. And I can also create another stream like stream. Uh, and maybe I can even con concatenate these two streams. So I can say the new stream S3 is equal to, I, if I want to append these two, so I can say S1 dot concat. sorry, s2 dot concat No, it is a function. So it will take stream dot, it's a stream dot concat s1 comma s2. And if I do this and try to run, we will see the output. Now we can print the new concatenated stream. So we will, we can call we can print it with system.out.printer or we can also use the for each function. And then we can say for each system.out.printer. And if we see the output now, okay, this will not take the println as function because this takes a lambda or it will take as a double column operator functions. So if I, if I print the result now, we'll see a concatenated array, concatenated item. Okay, the reason uh, this, uh, this stream was not concatenated because it returns as integer stream. So let's create another stream. So let's say stream S, let me make it S2 and make this one as S3 and make this one as S4 and print this S4, the concatenated stream. And here I can change the values 1, 2, 41, 21 and leave this like this. And now here I can say S2 concatenated with S3. So we ignored the stream created by input with like the in, in stream we ignored and we basically created stream from the stream of method two streams we created and we uh, we want to concatenate them and print them so let's see what is the output now so if we see the output is good but it is duplicate to to these kind of things so what we can do, we can basically call a distinct on top of it. So we can say distinct 
And if I print it now, so the output is now unique two, four, one, and this uh, this is the result. So this is how you can basically create a stream and also uh, and then after that take advantage of all the stream functions that we have. Now let's say we want to uh, create a range of numbers. So range of range of uh, numbers we want to create from stream from stream. So for that, let's say we want to use the int stream. So in the int stream, there's a function called range, and then there is two function range in start inclusive and and exclusive. So let's see what it does. So I will say start now create number from two until 11. So 11 will be excluded because this is how it works. So now if I, I take this as and store it in stream, uh, stream, to until 11, 2 until 10. This will be print up to 2 from 10, 2 to 10. And then if we print them, so we can print it by uh, for each, but let's try a different one this time. So instead of using double colon operator, we will try with the normal lambda function. So here we can say uh, the lambda function, let's say the value of well, hit enter, and then we can say system dot out dot print ln, and maybe let's say space bar, and then try to print the elements, uh, the values. Let's see what is the output now, if we try to run this, So it is now building. So what I will do is uh, I will comment this print uh, print statement. Comment this print statement for uh, visual purpose and remove the ln. I don't want the text in the next line. So if we run it now, so we see we got two, three, four, five, and up to ten. The eleven was excluded. But what if I want to also include 11 as well? So I will copy here and paste the same thing. And I will say 2 until 11, 11 included. For this, I have to mention range closed method. And if I run this now with the new variable here, so what will happen is, uh, yeah, run it. We'll see the output. So you see this, this is coming from this one, which is first, and then this is coming from the second one, two, three, four, five, 11. So here, if I give a space or a ln, so I'll say assistant ln, a new line. Then we will see it into two parts. So this is the with the range closed. So if you have a requirement that you have to create a stream within the range, then you can give anything. So here I've said two to uh, eleven. You can say one to five, hundred to two hundred, anything. And here we have created int stream. You can use other stream as well, like. Uh, the float and uh, the double and the long, it will work in the same way. So this is how you can create a range of stream. Let's start with optional. Optional demo, let's say. So what is optional? To understand that, uh, let's take an example. So what I will do, I will just copy this, the flat example, 
and uh, let me copy this piece the whole with main method. So we will have this data. So let's say this is a uh, list of string. These are the all the flats that we have. And of course, we have to give the closing curly braces of main method. So this is the flat list, a list of flats in an apartment. Now, what I want is I want to let's say do flat stop. And then stream, I can call the stream on top of it and then I will do filter. And in this, what I will do is now, I will just write a lambda and say, okay, uh, flat. And then I will just uh, say flat, or give me only those flat which starts with, let's say B, alphabet B. So, alphabet B. And now what I will do instead of doing uh, all, I mean collect collect the uh, collection collectors dot uh, to list. Instead of doing that, I will do find first. So it will return me the first element. So if you see what it returns, it returns an optional of string. The reason it returns an optional of string is there could be a chance that it might not find any element, and then there can be a situation that uh, it could return null. And then if you are trying to print null or do any operation on that null, let's say in this string, it does not find anything with starting with B. So it will return null. And later on what you're doing, you're just going ahead and printing system.out.print and null.length. And you want to print the string of the length of the string, then you will get a null pointer exception. So to avoid that, there is a zap. They have zapped this data, which it returns. They it has been zapped with optional off. And then now what happens if we try to capture this in a normal string? It won't allow string result because it will say you have to wrap it with optional because that's what it is being returned. Optional. So this is generics. So you can say optional. You can also put T here, which means generics. But I will say it is, I know the data type, so it is string. Yes. And now if I go ahead and do some print or anything with this element, let's say result dot. If I do anything with it, I will not get a null pointer exception. So the reason is it is zapped. So to get the value, I have to do result dot get. And only then it will print me the value. So the first element it will find with B is this. So it will print that value here. Let's run it. And what's, what's the output? Let's check. So we see the first element is B is zero one. This is this. If I say find with uh, Y, which it will not find, then let's see what will happen. So it says no such element present. It is going to throw us an exception, which means now what we can do is usually what we do, we have to do a null check. But now what we can do, we can say if result dot is present. We will check if it is present, only then we will say print that element. Else we can say let's say no result found. So we did not have to do any extra null check here. We did not have to say result not equal to equal to null. We did not have to do that. We get a method with which we can check if the element is present or not. So if we do this now, 
it says no element found. But if we change it back to B again, here, now it will say, okay, element has been, um, so it will just print the element. It is not going to say anything because that's what we are doing here. It is printing the first element that it is finding with, starting with B. So can, can we do this, uh, the same thing, but not in this many, one, two, uh, these two lines. Can we do it in much simpler way? Yes, there's another way. So you can say result, which is on optional dot, if present, if present, and this if present takes a consumer. And consumers are like methods which will just consume things and they will not uh, give any output or they will not return anything. Like the for each method that we saw. There we were just passing a lambda function, it will take the input and it will process it, that's done. It is not going to return anything. So here also, in the if present, we will just say if the data is present inside this, then just print that item. So you can write it in multiple ways. Let's say, I will say uh, data, and then I can say system dot out dot print ln data. We can also repeat this and write it in the double column operator way. So I will just say this is not required. This is not required. This becomes double column. That's it. So it will give us the same output. So if I run it now, so we will get three times B01 because three times because once for this if part, another for this part, another for this part. But what if I say, let's say I change it to Y again. So it will not find any. So it just else will get executed and there is no else here. So nothing will happen. And here also nothing will happen. So you see, this is how it is. So you can handle it this way or you can handle it in one line also like this, or even much simpler in this way. So this is what optional helps us to achieve. The null, null check validation becomes simpler with the help of optional. So now let's say, uh, so what we saw is you, we can implement the if like this, but how about the else? Because if nothing is found here, we are getting no result found for the top part, which is good. How we handled it at the top, it's fine. But if I want to do the same thing here, then what I have to do? I have to just say, op, this is result, which is optional, or else. I will say or else, this. And then in the or else, I can say, no data found. And if I run now, no data found, uh, let me put this one also in others. So that it's uh, distinguished. So it will print the else part from here and the else part from here. Yeah, let's uh, run it again. I'll comment this part. And I will also comment uh, this part, let's see. So that we don't have any, any confusion. Oh wait, we are not printing this. So that's the result. It is not giving us any data. So I will say system dot out dot print ln dot print ln and I will paste this or else inside the system. So now it will print this. Yeah, see. Uh, if I wanted to do something else also, let's say I say result dot or I would say or else get. 
maybe if I want to return something. Now I'm just printing here. If I want to return something, that also I can do. So if I say string output. So if uh, it doesn't find anything, then I want to basically return. Let's send the lambda function. And I will say return here, return, return a string, no data. Let's put it this way. And when I will print this, system.out.println, if I print this output, then I will get output, then I will get this one. So let's run it. So no data. So it's taking a supplier. Basically supplier is like, this is a consumer. So in the consumer, what happens? Whatever it just consumes, it doesn't return anything. But all else get returns a supplier, which means it returns something. Similarly, we have something called a result dot or else. So or else throw. So let's say I want to throw new, uh, let's say, null pointer exception. But this will not be work because you have to put it inside lambda. So now if I run, it will print this and also it will throw this exception. So it is handy when you are doing some business functionality and you want to throw some exceptions. So it says the exception must be throwable or declared open. Let's say I will say maybe IO exception. No, I cannot throw this. Maybe just exception. There's also not allowed, maybe runtime exception. Let's see now. It says unreported exception throwable must be caught or declared or thrown. Okay. Because it is throwing, so it is not allowing me to throw. So if you uh, write a logic and you throw this and click here, throws then it will basically allow you. So I will say throws uh, runtime exception, then this might probably work. Let's try now. Throwable well, must be caught or declared. Oh wait, I'm using a throw two times. So it should be only throw new. Let's try it out, return. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, so if you see now it returns, it's, throw then runtime exception. So this is how you can basically achieve this. So you can either throw something or throw something or you can get something or you can just print something on the else part. So this line we can also write in another way because it is a single line. So what we can do is we can get rid of this bracket and the return and then this bracket and this semicolon. And if we run the program now, we will get the exact same output that we are going as a runtime exception. Yeah, so this is how you can also throw exception in the or else throw case in, in the optional. So like we had, different ways to convert something into a stream like uh, by using the stream dot off method. Similarly, let's say I want to convert a 
something to an optional type. So in the optional class, we have a method called optional dot off. And we have optional dot off and optional of nullable. So let's see what is the difference. So let's say I will enter here. Java is awesome as a string. And because this is optional of a string, so we will also hold have to hold it in the optional of string type. And now I will say this is opt1. And if I try to print this, let's see what will be the output system.out.println. And then I will say opt1, opt1. And if I run this now, let's see what will be printed. So it is printing optional of, and then in the square bracket, it's printing this. So if I only want the string, which means this data, then I can say like this, and then optional dot get. If I do get, then it will only give me this string. Let's run and see. So you see, we got the string. So we can convert anything into optional of. So, and then we can use the different functions, different methods like optional of dot is present dot if present or else so all these benefits we will get if we convert something to optional of or if we are able to convert something to optional we can use those methods but there was another method which was optional dot of nullable let's see what this does let's say i have a string here string uh, name and its value is null. And if I pass this name null here, and now if I try to print this, so let me hold it in another optional, optional of string. And then I will say opt2. Let's see now if when we, when we print the, the value system.out.println, what happens? So if we print opt2, let's see what it will return because now we are passing directly null here. It's same as writing name or null, it's same. So if we print here the value of opt2, let's see what it will return. So we are now print, uh, running the program. So if you see now, this returns empty, which means optional of nullable returns empty for null value. So this is the output. But what if I copy this? and then pass a proper value. I would say name one, name one, and let's open it three, optional three. And here instead of null, I will say, hello. Now if I run, let's see what will be the output. So now the value is hello. So optional of nullable will return empty if the value is null. But if it has some value, it will return that value. It will act exactly same as optional of. So that's why it's optional of if the value exists and for nullable, it returns empty. So that's how it works.
let's talk about the reduce function so let's see create a class reduce demo or let's say stream reduce stream reduce and we will basically uh, just copy the main method syntax from here for now i don't want this so i'll get rid of this and now here what i want is i basically want to create a uh, 10 integers. So you already know how to do that. You will get int stream and then we will say range closed because I want them to be included. So 1, 10 numbers. Now what I want is I want to calculate the sum of these numbers. So what I want is I want to calculate the sum of all the numbers between 1 and 10. So it's like or calculate sum of of 10 numbers, let's say. Similarly, you can do sum of n numbers, but I am taking 10 numbers. So how I can do this in one line? So that's where the reduce function comes in. So here what I will do, I will pass on lambda. So I will say like this. And then I'm going to pass two argument, a comma b. And just I will say a plus b. So this lambda is returning the sum of these two. And what will it return? If I hover, what does it return? It returns an optional int. So let's take that. So optional int. That's the thing it returns. And I will say, okay, optional int, which is nothing but yeah. Optional int of sum. And now if I try to print this system dot out dot print ln and if I print this one you will see magically we will have the sum of those 10 numbers and that's the power in just one line you are able to now calculate sum of 10 numbers if you see this so we are able to calculate it you know it's showing me now in the optional form, but I can also do dot get and I can get the result. So if I now run it, so I get the sum as 55. But then how did this calculation happen? Let's open paint and try to understand. So we had one, two, three, four, like this we had. And the reduce function was taking something like this. X and Y. After that, it was like X plus Y. So what happened is, for the first time, the value of x was 1 and the value of y was 2. Then the calculation happened, which is here. And the output was 3. But from the next time onwards, the value of x is 3 and the value of y becomes also 3. So now the result is 6. Alright, so now we have the value as 6. Next, the value of x will be 4. And the value of y will be 
six and the result would be 10. And so on, it will go for five and 10, then six and then five, 15 and so on. It will continue this way. So this is how the range function works. And you can basically do these kind of operation in just one line with the help of radius. Next, let's uh, talk about two set function. So let me create a class. Stream to set. We'll copy the main method from here. So now, let's say I have a set of integer. So set of integer and I say uh, number set, number set equal to new of asset. And that's where I will quickly add a few numbers to my set, set dot add. And I will say one, and I will repeat this value. Let's say I will say three and then uh, four, seven, let's say nine. So these are the items in my set. What I want now is, because the reason why I'm using set is, so far we have been doing any stream operation on the list, but now we want to do the operation on the set. So that's why we have created a set and we have added some dummy values. And now let's see if we want to do some filter operation on this. So how I can do that? So it's uh, exactly same as what we do with list. So we say set dot, and then we call the stream. If you see this parallel stream, it is also same as stream, but it works slightly faster because it does the same operation in parallel. So I will say stream, and then I will call my filter. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass my predicate, predicate, which is the, I mean, the condition. So here, what I will say, that's the value, let the value of this A. And what I want is, I want all the numbers which are greater than three. So I will say A greater than three. Uh, so now, after that, I will do a collect. And exactly it's the same as collectors dot to set. Instead of to list, it will be to set. And because this is ret <laughs> returning us the data, so what we will do now, we will hold it in another set. So set of integer filtered set. Let's put it this way. And now if I go and run this one, System without dot print alone. Let's see if we get the output as desired. So you see the numbers greater than three. So I have uh, four, seven, nine. So if you see here, I've done something as collectors dot to set. Basically, we are calling the static method of collectors class. So if I want, I can do a static import as well. So I can say static, and then I can just import dot star, which means all the methods. And then I don't have to use these collectors again. So I can get rid of it. And I can use the set to set method as directly as to set method, and then this will be gone. I don't need this. So this is how you can also use the set method by static input. Similarly, 
we can also do uh, operation on map. Like now we know we can call stream from uh, list and set, but we can do the same operation on map. Now let's see another function which is called to map. So for that, uh, first let me rename this uh, to also because now we are also writing the code for to map. So I will say to map, to set and to map, refactor, and then yeah. So now what I will do is I will set, I will convert this set into a map and it can be done very easily in just one line. So let's do that. So I will say num set dot and I don't want to do any filter or other things. So I will just call stream and then I will say collect. As soon as I do a collect, what I will do is I will type to map. And now I can do the to map function directly because I've done a static input and this will take two parameters. One is the key mapper, another is the value mapper. Key mapper and value mapper and both of them are just lambda functions. So let me give a comma. So what I want is this output that you see, the map has key value. So I want one into 100, that is one object now of map the next object i want is again three which i see here in the set three into and then the three into uh, 100 which is 300 similarly i want the value to be multipl multiplication or multiplication of 100 and the key should be as is so what i will do here the first function that i will pass which is a key function i will say x should be as is, which means x, and y should be the multiplication of 100. If I do this much, my set will get converted to a map. So let me store that map here. So the map of key value, and because the key is also integer, and the value is also integer. So I'll store it in this. So new map. And now if I go and print it, system dot out dot print and then new map. Let's see what we got. If I run this, let's see the output. You see, the first is key is one, value is 100, second is key is three, value is 300, and so on. This is how it goes. Because I haven't uh, done any kind of uh, filtering, so it is printing all, but if I, here I can first step by a filter and then do a collect, anything is fine. So this is how the two set and two map function works. Let's talk about Averaging and summarizing functions. So for that, let's create a new class. Stream averaging and summarizing. I will just type summarizing. And then we have to create our main method. public static void main pass the string argument array of string and now let's create a set of integers so set of integer and let's call it as uh, number set and then uh, I will say new of has set. 
let's try to add now some elements to the num set so num set dot add let's say 11 then num set dot add 12 similarly we can go ahead and add few more so i'll copy paste this so i'll make this as 13 14 and 15. now what i want is i want to calculate the average of all the elements present inside this set so for that i will first have to convert the num set into uh, the stream and then after i have done that i have to call the collect method and in the collector in the collect method i have to pass the collectors dot if i go type complete collectors dot that's where you see we will get an averaging av functions so here we are saying averaging long averaging double and averaging int as we have the averaging long uh, sorry averaging int integer so we will take this function as soon as we call this this is going to take an uh, lambda function if you see it's taking a lambda function a two int function so what i will do is i will just say whatever you get with the value let's say x convert it to int and now the value that we will get the value which will be returned is an average for average of all this so we will receive it as double because the average value can be uh, it can be in double it, uh, not necessarily it will be in integer but it will be in double so let's print it out system dot out dot print ln and uh, let's say average let me run this uh, to see the output let's see what output we get the output should be average of these numbers so if you see the average of all these numbers comes to 13 so now let's have a look what is a summarizing function what does the summarizing function does so same uh, we will first convert our uh, num set which is our uh, collection to stream and then on top of it we will call the collect method and now on the collectors uh, collectors class collectors class we have to call summarizing so if you see here you have summarizing in double long some these kind of functions are available summing functions so let's uh, look at the summarizing function so if i click here summarizing and then this basically takes again the same a function like a lambda expression where we have to convert the value to int so here we are saying whatever value is coming convert it into int and now this date this actually does not return it returns something called as it doesn't return a double or something like here it returns something called as the summary statistics and the type of will be integer so it will return integer summary statistics that's what it will return so how can we check that if we go inside this function by right clicking if you press control you just click outside press control and hover on this so if as soon as you hover on this you see the return type is integer summarizing integer summary statistics and the argument is two int functions so if we go here the argument the parameter to this method was two int function which we already gave it's just a mapper function what we gave it converted into integer 
and the return type is int summary statistics. So we will copy this. And now we will go here and say int summary statistics summary is equal to and let's try to print a summary. So we'll say system dot out dot print again summary. So let's try to run it now. So as soon as we do this, we get a whole summary like count, which means there are uh, five elements. Some of them, uh, some of the all elements is 65. Minimum value is 11. Average value is 13. Maximum is 15. So let me change, let's say, uh, this to two to four and maybe add another element here, 105. Then we'll see this, the values will change. If I run it now, the average changes, which is also reflected here, but the count now became six elements. Some became 380, minimum is 11, maximum is two to four. So if you need, some in the situation, if you need similar, this kind of summary of your collection, you can use the summarizing function. Here it's uh, storing the int integers. So we are using summarizing int. If it was storing double or long, you can use corresponding summarizing function. Now let's say if you want to get the individual components like count or sum or min average, you can easily do that if you do system dot out dot print element and then just a summary dot and then you will get different functions for getting the maximum or the average or the mean these values so let's say i want to get the uh, average value so if i now run it should print me the average value as well so you will see and this average value will be coming from this data so this is what we are printing similarly if i change it to get max then it will give me the max value so i can get the individual component of the summary by calling the respective function so this is the max now let's see if i have to combine the two, two summary so let me copy this copy and i will create another one here uh, i would say num set two and copy this so if i now want to also calculate the summary of this one so i will just copy this line let's say this is another summary this is summary two so now if i do this and then i want to print system dot out dot print ln and then I will say summary dot combine and then I will say summary two I think there's a small mistake somewhere. So I got the summary two. So this is my summary. Uh, this is combine. Link the summary and then this is okay. So let me see. So it's not able to print this. Oh wait, I, I think I have to convert this to num set two. Then uh, it is going to say num set two uh, collect collectors dot summarizing int. And here also it con converts it to this. And let's call this in another line. It's not returning the printable value. And now these two will combine the 
summary. So if I now say system dot out dot print and then summary again. So now this should this should combine both the summary. So now what should be our count? Six items plus six items, 12. Similarly, the average will be also combination of individual summary. So if I run this now, so if you see the count is, the count is 12 and the sum of the combined is also double. Minimum is of course minimum, average will be average and maximum is maximum, nothing changes there. So this is output of combined summary. That's what we see here. Let's talk about parallel stream. So I've created another class called parallel stream demo. And then here's my class main method. And I have created an integer list with some dummy uh, values. So what parallel stream does? Till now what we have learned is sequential stream, sequential stream. And what it does is it, it follows order and runs items in stream in a sequence. Because it does this now, sequential stream, it is slow in processing. But now let's say we want something fast in processing. To, uh, for that, we have something called as parallel stream, but it will not follow the order. It will not follow the sequence. It will just run it in multiple threads in parallel order. So parallel stream runs in multiple threads do not follow order it's faster in processing so let's uh, look at with an example what it means so if you see here we have a stream so if i now just say int list of stream and then call the stream here and then uh, let's call for each and try to do the print system dot out print ln let's say you will see the order the sequence will be It follows the sequence first one and then two comes then three four five it follows the sequence and it is it took some time but I, if i want to convert it into a parallel stream there are two ways to do that so i can again call stream but then i can call a parallel function on top of it and then i can again call for our for each function and pass the consumer Remember consumers are just, they, they, this is a consumer. It just uh, for each takes a consumer, which means the consumer does not return anything. It just takes something and does the processing. Here it is taking all the data one by one and printing it. So if we see this now, there will be a difference now. In the second one, let's say if I put a demarcation, We'll say, uh, let's say this is our demarcation. Let's run it.
and you will see the difference in output. So if you see, when we run for the first time, the sequential stream, which is this one, prints it in the order. The order is maintained one, two, three, four. The order in which the items appear here, one, two, three, four, like this. The order is maintained. But in the parallel stream, the same, the same list is getting printed in random order. Six, five, eight, seven, no order is there because this is running in parallel threads, which means multiple threads are running and picking the different items and executing this line. If I run it again, this will change. So first is six and one is at the last, you will see, but this won't change. So let's see. So every time when I run, okay, now let's say the order is same. Uh, if I run it again, let's observe this one, six, five, eight, seven, four, three. So if I run it now, it is maintaining that order, but it is random. It can be that when you are running it multiple times, the order will also change. So if I now, let's say, uh, do some change here, maybe add another item to it, uh, nine and run it. See the order change now, the seven came and six came here, but this order is same always. So parallel stream does not maintain order and also it, it is faster in processing. So this is one way to do this. If I want to do the same thing again in another way, so I have another option. So I can say int of list dot, instead of calling stream, I can directly call parallel stream and then do my operation for each and then system dot out and then call the method reference println. And if I comment this, it will do the same job as the above line. This line and this line are exactly same, just that these two are combined here. And now if you see, the output is this, it's just random. So this is how you can basically, if you want to do operation which are faster, which you want to, the processing of your stream to be faster, then you can choose for parallel stream. But be aware that the sequence or the order it will not be maintained. So let's take an example when you can use the parallel stream. You can use parallel stream, let's say you have 10,000 employees and then you want to save the employees data in uh, database. So if you go with the normal stream and try to do one by one in the for loop and then save each employee into the database, then it could take uh, around uh, 30 seconds for you to complete maybe more. But if you do the same thing, save the employee records into database in a parallel stream, then it will be much less. Instead of taking 30 seconds, it might be done within 10 seconds. So you save 20 seconds of your time. So this kind of operation, you can do it in parallel stream where it does not matter. The sequence of operation does not matter. But if wherever the sequence of operation matters, you, you should not use parallel stream. There you should go for sequential stream. So this was about parallel.